Hey, there were a few audio glitches at the start of the episode, but hopefully you still enjoy. I'll see you next time. Hey, welcome back to Totally Random Talk Show. Today, we've got lots of interesting topics for you, and uh, if you don't know already, we're going through all the letters of the alphabet, and we choose five or six random topics that start with that letter. So today, we're on the letter X. Now, there aren't a lot of words that start with the letter X. Usually, it doesn't start words it is maybe in words like explosion or explain but that starts with e so without further ado tracen would you like to introduce the first topic absolutely some say it's a piano and others say it's a bunch of little blocks that you hit with sticks but it's called the xylophone and it's neither the xylophone is a mallet instrument in the percussion section of a band or orchestra now i actually play xylophone and I do have to say, I like marimba better. <laughs> <laughs> wow, freaking favorites, I see. <laughs> Listen, okay, the xylophone, it you can have hard plastic mallets or soft plastic mallets. You don't use any fabric or yarn mallets or anything like that. So basically, um, you have the, like, mallets are like, if you think of maybe, I, I guess the best way to explain it would be like a drumstick. With a, with a rubber ball, ball with a rubber ball on the end with a thinner base so it's just like a I guess a stick with a ball on the end so you you usually hold two of them for the xylophone but the reason I like marimba is is because it's easier to hold four on like usually you you can do it on xylophone but usually you don't you usually do that on other instruments like vibraphone or marimba and <laughs> definitely not bells <laughs> but yeah, and and so but the xylophone is pretty fun to play, and it, it it's got a unique sound because either it's made of wood, usually kind of like I think it's like what type of plat? Let me let me find out for sure what some of them are made of. Um, yeah, here we go. Okay, we're gonna search it up real quick, and. As Tracen's searching that up, um, one other interesting thing with xylophones is that some, like one that we have at my band school at school, is that is it looks like a marimba, but it's not. Okay, so xylos wood or metal, yeah, metal ant bars and wooden bars. Okay, so then the the wood that makes them up is quite different from the wood that makes up a mar- a marimba usually. It's colored differently. Like they don't usually color the wood on on a marimba. They just stain it and treat it. And some xylophones don't do that. But yeah, I, I I'm talking too much about the xylophone. I have getting I too have technical. Things to say. Um, first thing about xylophones that I will say right now, I like to play the little children xylophones because they sound completely terrible. They they sound terrible. I'm sorry. But um, they're just really funny at the same time because they're like three little bars, like literally three. You're just like, doo, 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 doo. like that. That's all you could do. Like that, that <laughs> you can't do much because there's not a lot of variety. But I don't know. That's that's fun. <laughs> yeah. And then honestly, so. Since I'm not really in percussion at all, I don't really get the chance to play a xylophone, right? But I have played a xylophone before, and I think they're just like a really fun instrument, right? And in my mind, it's kind of like a piano. It's not a piano, of course. It has the same key layout as a piano yeah. would. That's what reminds me of a piano. But it's not a piano because the wood is making the sound because it's the vibration. And with a piano, it's playing the note and it's going back and hitting a string in the back of the piano which vibrates too either way there's a vibration which creates a sound wave which is more of a physics kind of thing but the xylophone too you if you've ever seen one you notice that underneath the bars it has um some metal tubes those metal tubes are specific lengths on purpose to help project the sound and everything and they're under each um each bar of the xylophone and 
let me tell you um so you have to put string you have to put like a string through all of the xylophone bars to keep them together because they're like set in specific spots on the xylophone it's kind of weird because it has like a metal frame and then they're put in them but redoing the stringing is the worst it like you have to make sure you get all the notes in the right spots so that you don't mess it up and everything and then like you have to put it through all of them and it's just a hassle but it's fine it's chaos <laughs> yeah i've only had to do it once so mm. i'm lucky so well, yeah that sounds exciting <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> but enough boring you with xylophones some people may find it interesting but i don't want to talk too much one thing that xylophones can do really well is create music, which is their purpose. So I'm going to try and connect it to our next topic, which also has music because it's a movie, TV it's got show. a really and great from, soundtrack. Yes. I'm going to assume. Yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah, there's music because it's a movie and there's TV shows. And we're talking about X-Men here. So... I've I've seen a few episodes of the original X Men show from nineteen ninety four, and I've seen all of the X Men movies, uh, but I haven't really read any comics or anything. But I do have to say, uh, well, I have to ask actually, out of the X Men that you know of, who is your favorite? Okay, so for those of you who are listening, I have not seen any of the X-Men movies. Don't get mad at me if you're, like, a big fan. But, like, I just have not seen them. I did not grow up watching them. And I also just kind of forgot they existed until they came back on Disney+. Plus and I just stopped caring about it at that point. <laughs> Disney+, Plus, that is. I don't know. I just... <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've had, like, a time where I just don't watch anything on there. So, yeah. Um... But out of all of the X-Men, I'd probably have to... I know this is generic, but, like, Wolverine is so cool. Just because he, like, wears tank tops all the time and his hair is all flowy and it looks awesome. It's, he's got, like, a deep voice, too. Yeah. You want to fight me, bub? Exactly. It's so cool. <laughs> you know, I actually have to agree. I, I do love Wolverine. I think one reason... Well, don't I, I don't recommend X-Men Origins Wolverine. That movie is really not great because it, like, kind of ruins Wolverine in a way because it, like, totally makes plot holes and all that stuff. But anyways, when he's in the main X-Men movies, he's really good. And I think Hugh Jackman is the perfect person to play Wolverine. But they're probably going to have to find someone else if they ever, you know, like, make a newer movie or something because I, I don't know how that would work. But, like... He's he's kind of the main hero in in the main focus in the X Men movies at least, because he he meets this girl in the first movie Rogue, and that kind of snowballs into him joining the X Men team and being part of their team and living in Charles Xavier's school, and eventually teaching there, and like so he he basically plays a big part in the movies, which is why I like him and. Another character I do like is um, Quicksilver because, mm -hmm. honestly, just learning about how they made those scenes in the movies where – so so his power is that he can run really fast. And so in the – It's the name. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So – and there's also, there's also two Quicksilvers because of the MCU, how they did it. Because usually Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are siblings and Magneto is their father. <laughs> But they had to change that because they because the MCU didn't have rights to the X Men, so there's two Quicksilvers now, which is kind of weird. But but anyways, the original X Men Quicksilver can run super fast, and so they had some scenes where everything is like floating in the air and it's all slow motion, and he just is running around like moving bullets and stuff. And the way they made those is just insane because they like had to hang up some pots, and then they also made some CGI. And like Fallon just edited people in the frame to like make it look right, and it is flawless. It really, honestly, looks like it could be real. It's it's good, and he's just so awesome because he's so funny. That sounds pretty amazing. I'm gonna have to watch him honestly because like 
it it sounds like they're really good. So I'll just have to sit down and watch all of them. Yeah, I recommend the first three, at least if if you don't have time to watch the rest, but they're all pretty good. The first three are the best. So good to know. Good to know. Um, I I don't really have anything to say about the X Men. <laughs> the last thing I have to say is that. What's up with bald people being so powerful? Charles Xavier, Thanos, we got Shrek, Mr. Clean, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, <laughs> Vin Diesel, um, who else? Um, uh, Aang, Avatar, he literally is insane. <laughs> um, the list goes on and on. It just keeps going. It, it just never ends. Danny DeVito. D- Dan- yeah, <laughs> holy cow! And then the and then you got over, you got also the one guy, the villain from Shazam. He's bald. <laughs> What's up with bald people? They lose their hair and they gain infinite amounts of power. The Watcher. He's bald. He literally just watches the universe. And I'm trying to think of who else. There's there's plenty of char- Drax. Oh, you're right. You're Groot right. doesn't have any hair. He's bald. <laughs> I guess. Wait, he <laughs> has twigs. Okay, he has twigs. Moss. He's he's. A bit... Don't judge. Don't judge. But yeah. Lex Just, Luthor. Yeah, Lex Luthor. I forgot his name, so I had to search it up. Um, the the, the list goes on. You get it. Yeah. But bald characters tend oh, to the, have more. The power. one lady from Doctor Strange. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, like she she was the sorceress powerful. sorceress supreme, and it's just it's just so strange to me because <laughs> strange. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. That just these Don't puns cannot strange. stop. <laughs> Technically, Spider Man is bald with when he has a suit on because there's no hair going through the suit. But no, <laughs> <Hell wait>. oh. <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> that's a that's a bit of a stretch though. But my point is that bald characters tend to have more power. And I think it's a sign of power for some reason. One Punch Man, he's bald, and he can kill a man with one punch. That's his name. Except for there's, like, Goku and stuff, and he's got, like, more hair than anyone else, and he's got infinite power. So. Bald is scary, guys. Yeah. Bald is scary. I don't want to go bald, but now now I kind of want to. <laughs> I, I'm going to jinx myself for the future. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Palpatine. He doesn't have any hair, right? Yeah, and uh, Vader doesn't Vader either. doesn't have hair. He's got like an egg. Yoda right? has a little bit, but he's mostly bald. Receding hairline. He, he's he's in the Danny DeVito Receding category. Receding hairline it is. Receding hairline it is. Hmm? You, you do it way better, yeah. I, I don't I'm, I'm low-budget Yoda. <laughs> they already had a low budget Yoda in the first movie with <laughs> exactly. him. Exactly. But low, low back. budget, like no budget Yoda. That's fair. All right, moving on. I I can connect this and you you can say what the topic is, but I'm going to try and connect it. So, in the X-Men th- there's lots of broken bones. They're superheroes. You break lots of bones. Now, you know what else you break bones in? The X game. That's correct. I was gonna, I was gonna make the connection of, the X Men is a very extreme show. You know what else is extreme? Extreme games. The X Games. <laughs> now, I don't. Well, they're probably only in the U.S. I think. Tony Hawk be like, what? <laughs> Three flips. <laughs> Anyways, in two seconds. If you don't know what the X Games are, basically, it's just a bunch of people on. Like wait, like bicycle, uh, like it's BMX like bikes, motorbikes, or motorbikes, BMX uh, bikes, BMX skateboards, like just anything bikes, with wheels that's not a car. Plays, roller skates. Yeah, anything with wheels that's not a car doing tricks. So they do like flips and spins and all kinds of stuff. If you if you've never seen the X Games, you can look up some YouTube videos of maybe like I don't know the craziest things on the, on the X Games, and I'm sure tons of videos will come up. But what I think is interesting about the X Games is that, like, th- there's lots of marketing behind it. I know that sounds weird, but it's like, you know, like, companies like Red Bull, like Red that's Bull. That's, like, how they got that's, their money. They have their, they have their own, like, their own, like, athletics kind of division. They 
And I'm going to go out on like a, a whim here and kind of come up with my own little hypothesis, uh, emphasis on hypothesis. But I'm going to assume that their like motto, Red Bull gives you wings, came from like all of the stunts where people just stayed in the air for like a super long time. I, I, I would think that that's probably where it did come like, from. I don't know. I, I feel like it is. Because like Red Bull is always a sponsor of like the x games it's always and you see like they have a youtube channel and they do a bunch of like extreme stuff like there's people skydiving f between planes like these two guys oh, flew planes yeah. they skydived and glided across to switch planes which is just insanity like stuff people never thought of like really crazy stunts and they're all sponsored by Red Bull, and they're on their YouTube channel. I mean, what, the last uh, space jump was sponsored by Red Bull, I'm pretty sure? Yeah, yeah, like the the longest space jump. Yeah. A world record. Like, it's kind of crazy, because you would, I guess it makes sense because they have to have some sort of way to advertise, and that's actually pretty smart. You, you use your energy drink to show, like, that it makes athletes be able to do crazy things, right. and then people will buy it. But it's just kind of crazy to me that that they've kind of built up that kind of thing. Specifically Red Bull. There's other companies too, but specifically Red Bull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, if you haven't seen the X Games, go watch it. It's definitely worth watching, especially yeah. just all the cool stunts that you see. Yeah, and even like the skateboarding and stuff they have in the Olympics, they had in the last Olympics, that was pretty interesting to watch. And that's not really the X Games, but... It is pretty extreme, and they do some crazy stuff. You know, I do have a question. We all hear about the X Games, but what about the Y and Z Games? And all the other, what, 24 letters? Well, no, it's it's just Y and Z. We're, we're measuring this on a 3D scale. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Plus, they don't have Y Games because people are like, Y Games. Well, no. <laughs> The X Games is Z just a games. flat, like, it's not even that cool. There's no excitement, but a X Y games. games, it's a drop. People breaking bones. For those of you who know math stuff and graphs, <laughs> the Y Games would just drop. <laughs> Dropping bars. Yeah, but then the X Games would just be straight lines. Wait, wait. X forward. stands for extreme. Extreme games. Y would stand for... YOLO games. <laughs> you only live once. And Z, Z games. Z be... games. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, it'd be what would it be? Zoo games. Zoo games. Yeah, just you a bunch of animals. extreme things. You just with... fight with animals. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah, sure. It's the Coliseum. <laughs> they bring in a feral monkey, ostrich, and a raccoon, and they beat you to a pulp, <laughs> and then they just leave. They bring you a bear. <laughs> No, they they find they find animals that are bipedal and can shoot guns and are specifically a raccoon. You know what I'm saying? Rocket raccoon out here. Some raccoons, a couple of monkeys. Monkeys are crazy though, okay? If you had one monkey against a person that was defenseless, I think the monkey could win. Brace yourself for what I'm about to share because it's scary and well, it's it's more just gross than scary, but I once saw two monkeys. One started to take a piss, and the other went right under him, and it just started drinking. <laughs> it started, it drinking. started drinking. <laughs> Why? It was like five feet away, just... And it goes into his mouth, and I was like, what am I watching? I'm, I was at the zoo, and then I also got flipped off by one of them. <laughs> okay, a monkey... <laughs> A monkey learned how to flip you off. And then another one used the force. <laughs> what is up with monkeys? They're on another level. Dude. They're like, they've ascended to a new level of thinking. <laughs> really, monkeys are crazy. Monkeys are insane. There there used to be a monkey at the, um, the Hogle Zoo in Colorado uh, where if you would kiss the glass, because he always sat by the glass, if you kissed it, he'd kiss you back. And oh. so you don't you'd see a line of people waiting to kiss the monkey. <laughs> That's totally not sanitary at it's, all. It's not. It's not. You probably kiss so many random people. <laughs> <laughs> think about that. Oh my gosh. Think bro, about that's it. The thing you think of. No, I'm just well, thinking about all the kids that touch the glass with their nasty fingers. Yeah, but like you stuff. gotta think if there's a line of people waiting that's to kiss true. this monkey. Yeah. 
was, it was, I, I think actually it was an ape. It was an ape. Gorilla. Gorilla. Oh yeah. <laughs> you want to <laughs> kiss a gorilla? <laughs> yeah. But like, how many people have kissed that glass in that day alone, and you're you're touching that same glass with your lips? Ugh. It's gross. I would. <laughs> no, oh, wait, what? No. Hold on. No. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing. But I'm not. Yes, I am. <laughs> um. <laughs> moving on. Yeah. You know, I, there's a lot to say about monkeys. We could talk about them more later. <laughs> but one thing that the X Games does have is lots of broken bones. So you know the athletes are going to have to go in and get an x-ray. So that's our next topic. Now, I've gotten a few x-rays. Never broken any bones. But I've gotten close. I've broken a bone. Which which bone? I broke my left arm, which is my dominant arm, and it sucked. Oh, same. But not about breaking the arm, the dominant arm thing. Yeah. <laughs> Lefties unite! We only make up how, how much percent of the population Let's find is out. left-handed. You can talk about how terrible it is being left-handed. So, you right-handed people there that are listening, you won't know. But when I'm writing with a pencil or a pen, and I don't make sure to lift up my hand slightly, then the side of my palm by my pinky will get rubbed with pencil and pen and get stained by the pencil or pen because I'm writing with my left hand. It gets super, super annoying. It's like you're just you're just writing, you know, doing some taking some notes, doing a test or something, and you get pencil smeared everywhere. It, it's the worst thing possible. It's like seriously, and then like you go to shake someone's hand, and of course now like I just go for the right hand because that's the normal thing to do, but like you just intuitively kind of sometimes want to shake with your left hand, and that just sounds weird. But it happens. Oh, yeah. And uh, left-handed people make up it's 10%. 10% of the world population. We're outnumbered by 90% of the population. And there's two of us here right now that are left-handed. So, yeah, this is this is insane. <laughs> this is super rare. Statistically improbable, guys. If we had another left-handed person here, it would be... A scientific anomaly. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We'd have the FBI coming over. They'd be knocking with their right hands because, you know. <laughs> they're they're like that. FBI, open up. Do you know what kind of bugs me? Um, so most doorknobs are on the right, or sorry, they're on the left side of a door, right? Yeah. Typically. Like when you're entering somewhere, they're on the left side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That sucks. I'm like it's such a small thing, but like when you're going inside of a house. Oh yeah, cause you like you have to you go to the opposite you know, side, I guess. Uh, but not all doors are like that, I guess. Sometimes, sometimes doors are like that, but it's just weird to me, cause I have to like reach my arm over and like I don't know. Yeah, I get what you mean. Did Did you hear what I was saying before about getting pencil smeared on the side of your hand? Yeah, yeah, I but think it's terrible. That's the worst thing. But being left-handed does have some perks because you, you, you can say you're left-handed. Thing. People are like, oh, really? I didn't know you're left-handed. <laughs> you know, I will say this. I hate scissors. I hate scissors with a passion. They and that hurt. is why I have bought left-handed scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically made for left-handed people. We have to do this, guys. Or we have to find scissors that work for both hands that don't have a direction why are scissors made specifically for for right hands yeah. and then also like like if you think about it realistically keyboards like the mouse is for your right hand because most people are right-handed and now i've just learned how to do it that way and now i can't do it the other way but like we've been forced to learn and like controllers like for video games are made for right-handed people and it's ridiculous even like Literally cars, are <laughs> but that one's that one's okay. That one's not that bad, yeah. but it's just kind of funny. Like everything's made for right-handed, right-handed people. people. I feel like just take for granted the fact that they already know how to do things like this. But left-handed people actually have to learn this. It's rough. Like it's hard. 
like most left-handed people are not ambidextrous, which means you can use your left hand and your right hand. So like I, I don't know. I feel like it's a first world problem, but it's also like really annoying. <laughs> yeah. So, <sighs> back to X-rays. <laughs> yeah. I broke my left arm. I would be glad to tell the public why. Just don't laugh at me. I can't make any promises oh, here. Oh, no. <laughs> so, once upon a time, when I was a child, I was jumping on the trampoline with a couple of friends. And when we were jumping on the trampoline, I thought it would be a great idea to go to the front end of the trampoline, because there was a net around it, and jump out face first. And do a roll. And land it. And you know what happened? I put my arms out in front of me to do the roll. And my arm just went back. And it went in a very wrong position (laughs) for an arm to go in. And I heard a crack. And I sat there and I was like, what just happened? (laughs) You just sat there and said, what just happened? And my arm was in a weird shape. (laughs) Yeah, it's like in um, Harry Potter in the (laughs) Chamber of Secrets when he gets rid of the – when – what's his name? Lockhart? Yeah, Gilderoy Lockhart. Yeah, gets rid of the bone in his arm and he just stretches his arm back and he's like, (gasps) my arm. (laughs) (laughs) But I think the funniest thing about that is that you really thought you could do some parkour. To the show off to your friends. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> it Guys, backfired. Don't don't try to impress people. It never works, and they're never impressed when you actually do it, anyways. <laughs> Just learn how to do parkour. <laughs> no, no, I'm parkour. sorry. Parkour. <laughs> parkour. I was like, what? Eight? I was eight. Listen, I've gotten an, ex- an X-ray on my foot before because I kicked a wall, <laughs> and it was, <laughs> it was. Not broken, but like the bone was fractured a little bit. So it's like it's like still painful. You know what is weird? I kicked the wall. (laughs) You know, you know when they take like that weird cold pad thing, and they put it over whatever they're X-raying. Yeah, that's to block the radiation. Yeah, it's just weird to me. Like it feels weird. You you don't want to get radiation in your insights fun fact the radiation you get from an x-ray is not actually going to do any harm to your body then why do they use the thing because it's america this is america safety Eh. don't they do it everywhere scientifically uh what you get from an x-ray is i think a couple months worth of radiation that you normally get which is not really that bad but it's still not the best yeah. for you. Yeah. It's better to just be safe than sorry. What if some guy walks out of there with four legs? That's fair. But that's <laughs> not how it works. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Because the movie said so. Okay. For those of you who believe that... Okay, sorry. This, this is a pet peeve of mine. Um, there are people who still believe that radiation is a type of matter. That it has, like, green sludge that it is green sludge or it comes out of toxic waste barrels no you know most it is time, something you can't see most of the time it's infrared or microwaves that like and by when i mean infrared or microwaves i mean types of light waves there, there's visible light and then there's invisible yeah invisible light types of light that we, light waves that we cannot see and that we will not see like radio waves Infrared, um, microwaves, gamma rays, so like that. All of those can cause radiation. Oh yeah, and ultraviolet. So UV. So the sun can can give you a sunburn because it's literally cooking you with the light. It's cooking you with UV rays, like you're yeah. getting radiation from that. And the and the radiation comes from the light because I can't I can't remember specifically why, but it causes the radiation to affect your body. Fun fact for you. So, uh, this has everything to do about the atmosphere. Um, but you actually live in a magical bubble. If you, if you know this already, I commend you, and I'm glad that you do. But you live in a magical, magical bubble called the 
Earth. But then there's the ozone layer, which is also part of that bubble. <laughs> and essentially, the ozone keeps all of the bad UV rays outside of our atmosphere by using the water vapor and all the other components of it to have like the UV rays essentially bounce off, right? So if you look at a scale of the atmosphere, right, we all know this, it gets colder the higher you go. But there's a point where that table turns and it starts to heat up to about, I think it's 4,000 degrees in the atmosphere. That is why meteors burn up, is because it gets really, really hot up there. And I feel like this is something that a lot of people don't know or just forget, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Thank so, you. There you go. UV radiation. Yay! <laughs> we love it. <laughs> In moderation, it can be good. Yeah. Because you can get vitamins from the sun. I think I think the only exception to radiation being an actual matter, and I, I wouldn't consider this actual matter, but if you've ever heard of the elephant's foot before... Um, I don't think I have. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go on a little tangent right here. So, essentially... Um, we've all heard of the Chernobyl disaster, right? Oh boy, have yeah. we? <laughs> Way back when in the 80s, right? It was the 80s, yeah. 90s, 80s. Yeah, it was. I think it was. Um, Late 80s. Out in Chernobyl, Russia, Okay. they had a nuclear reactor. Wait, wait wasn't it? Wait. Was it in Russia or was it in Ukraine? Or was it like... It was like... Like right in between. I'm trying I to... Because I know between. it was... I know it was near both. But I'm trying... I don't know if it was like... Specifically in Ukraine or in Russia? Um, um, let's see. Chernobyl. I'm going to find a reliable. Okay, here we go. The world 1986. World oh, it was it was in Ukraine. But like, okay. I think it was on the edge. Oh, oh okay. That's that's why. Russia had to do with it. But Yeah. I think. Wait, no, no. Oh, yeah. Wait, no. Never mind. That was something else. Okay. Forget what I said about that. So. It was a disaster for those of you who don't know the chernobyl accident uh occurred due to the flaws of uh the reactor design and the inadequately trained personnel um and basically it kind of just like the reactor overheated and then it kind of just exploded and a lot of people died um and this is kind of fun so this is pretty much how they just like so the most uh, radioactive room in the world is down in the basement of I think it's like a school somewhere or like no it's under the facility sorry mm -hmm. um, the school is the second I think so under underneath the Chernobyl facility basically right directly under the reactor um, you can find uh, what people would call the elephant's foot, which essentially is when the reactor exploded, it caused a massive heat wave and it created this blob of like metal, right? Um, and I forgot what the compound is, uh, like what it's made of. Let's it, find wait, it was right there. Oh, it was? Yeah. It's all right. I just realized something that I said earlier that it was caused by Russia. Technically at that point Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union and Russia was the main head of the Soviet Union so I think part of the design flaws were because they like to go cheap because it was a communist country and so a lot of the times they wouldn't they wouldn't have big technological advances really quickly it'd be very slow. Okay, I found it. So Essentially, the elephant's foot is made up of nuclear fuel, melted concrete, and metal. So, basically, it just melted through the reactor, through the floor, and it came to this weird little basement area. And it's been sitting there ever since. And it's still active. In <clears throat> 1986, um, it would be fatal after 30 seconds of exposure. Meaning, if you stood next to it for 30 seconds, you would die. Which is... T that's awful. That's and 
really quick. Today, the radiation is fatal at 300 seconds. So if you stood by it for about five minutes, you would die. That's a very short amount of time to die. And even if you stood by it for a shorter amount of time, you would still have some lasting effects. You would have about, like, um, well, I want to say a couple decades worth of radiation poisoning. In one hour, the elephant's foot would expose you to the radiation of over four and a half million chest x-rays. So, there you go. One thousand times stronger than exposures that have been clearly linked to cancer. You would instantly die after The scary part is, there is a picture of the elephant's foot that has been taken, but the even scarier part of it is when the camera, or when the picture was taken... Um, you can see, you can clearly see a person in the background, but the camera was receiving so much radiation from this glob of metal that it actually messed up the entire photo and the person themselves. So it basically just looks like this person's getting like zapped with electricity and like half of their body is gone. It slightly looks like a jellyfish. Yeah. It's, it's very creepy. And you have to realize that... Whoever took that picture is probably not living. <laughs> yeah. Another big thing is no one knows who took that picture and how they got it out. How they got it out. So, how? Yeah. Either if, if it was in – when it was taken is a factor because if it was taken when – before we had digital cameras or, something, or that you could really use, you had, it, you had to like process the photo, then I don't understand how they would have gotten that photo. But if it was just a digital camera and somehow they were able to like send it to a server or something and someone was able to view it and send it everywhere, mm -hmm. I, I have no idea. But that's just insane. Yeah. So <clears throat> what have we learned today? Radiation is bad, but it's not matter. It, you it can't, doesn't, it you doesn't can't see matter. it. Just, <laughs> Nothing really matters. Don't get copyright <laughs> infringement. Okay. Nothing really it rhymes with matters. Hatters. Hatters. <laughs> Welcome to the Mad Hatters. <laughs> That's more copyright. Yes. No. I'm Hatters. just super angry. Welcome to the angry Splatters. hat person store. <laughs> Instead of mad like crazy. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> we might as well move on to our final topic. This one's a doozy. Now... Listen, radiation is present everywhere in the universe. And even in fictional places like the galaxy of Star Wars, where they have X-Wings. Radical. Radical, man. That's so sick, man. I'm cha, dude. <laughs> I'm cha. <laughs> <laughs> he turned into, what's his name? The turtle from Finding Nemo? 150, dude. <laughs> I don't know why I can't remember his name. Crush? Crush. Yeah, that's right. We So at Disney... Okay, I, I know Whoa, I'm going off on a tangent man. real quick here, but at Disneyland or California Adventure, they have a, t a turtle talk with Crush, and you can ask questions to Crush the turtle. How does that work? Do they have a guy behind the scenes I or something? I think they do, because there's no way he would... like Like, really, he makes like insane comments and good answers to questions so one person like he mentioned he had a like 100 kids some guy was like you should name all the kids and so then he's like oh yeah we got like crush jr and 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 thanos and keanu <laughs> and like he said thanos he really did and then he's like oh yeah and thanos is going through this phase where he thinks he's a snapping turtle <laughs> <laughs> and, and then like Keanu and like some other names and stuff there were a bunch he really did name all of the kids it was kind of insane but I thought it was funny and I just thought it was interesting because because they must have someone behind the scenes if he's able to first of all make references to modern movies and things and be able to actually answer the questions in real That's time insane. with a response because if if it was just you ask the question and then he just makes a an answer that's like so random he's like oh I don't know 
<laughs> then it would be boring. So yeah. Yeah. Back to X-Wings. Do you, would you like to say One anything? of the most amazing things about X-Wings is the fact that while, yes, they're fictional, they are probably one of the most well-developed and designed uh, spacecrafts oh. in Star Wars. Yeah. And I can tell you why. Mm. Mm-hmm. I want you to take a look at a TIE fighter. Wait, wait. Yes, yes. Okay. Really quickly, I just want to make a point that TIE fighters were developed by the superpower of the galaxy, the Empire, who had literally all the money they could ever need to design something. And the resistance had like Nothing. very, very minimal They they really like, didn't have resources. resources. <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> oh now I can't talk. It's fine. It's just, okay. just, just go for it. Anyways <laughs> <laughs> So TIE Fighters essentially are a terribly cramped spacecraft that is so so small it's tiny that it has gigantic foils that are going straight up on both sides and i don't i don't even know what they do like do they cut and, through space there's nothing no, in no, space no listen listen first of all it's a movie second of all they look cool <laughs> That's, Bad reasons. That's the only thing. Okay. The problem is, these giant foils on the sides are blocking your vision, and another thing is, you have this tiny little circle that you're seeing through that the, also blocks your the vision tiny, even more. The tiny window... Okay, this is really random, but if you've ever played Star Wars Squadrons, in that game, if you use a TIE Fighter, you are at a literal disadvantage, because it is a warship than the X-Wing. The X-Wing is superior in every single way. The TIE Fighter's window is smaller than a person. Like, yeah. I don't even know how Darth Vader was able to just maneuver that thing. I don't even know. And the sound it makes, the... <laughs> you can hear it from, like, 3,000 light it years away. It breaks the laws of physics and can make a sound in space that that's loud enough for the X-Wings. And the thing with the X-Wings, too, is that they could just hear that and just be like, Oh, hey, there's a TIE Fighter. Go shoot him. Okay. Guess what? <laughs> You can't hear things in space. But it's a movie, so let's just pretend that we can. Yeah. I want you to think about this for just one second. And I know, I know, I'm taking this from The Last Jedi, so don't get mad at me. But this is actually scientifically correct. When awful lady person takes the ship and goes straight through the giant Star Destroyer, we all remember this. No sound. Not a sound. And it's awesome. But then the TIE Fighter's going... <laughs> just like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the X-Wings are like, uh, Red Leader, Gold Leader, go yeah, get they, him. They, they, got, they got that Bluetooth connection, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then they're just like, yeah, we got him. Exactly. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing is, the vision in an X-Wing is amazing because it's a 360 degree, like, the thing, peripheral yeah, vision. You kay. can see above you. You can see to mm-hmm. the sides of you. You can see in front of you. You can look behind yeah. you. And and one interesting thing about the, the X-Wings at the, at the time is that you notice that they're designed exactly like fighter jets that we have in the military. Okay? Think about it. Yeah. Okay? It has... One person in the back that's facing towards the back, that's your wingman, that can see everything that's behind you to warn you of dangers and to make sure that you're safe and make sure that everything is working correctly. And then you have the person in the front who can be working the guns and flying the ship, the pilot. And you also, on these ones, you have R2 units that are inside of the X-Wings. Literally, like, it's like, picture putting like a an amazing super CPU yeah, super inside AI of your... <laughs> like, like, it's literally, insane. Literally, they're superior. With you can't lasers. put an R2 unit <laughs> in oh, a TIE fighter. And uh, TIE fighters don't have shields, they while don't. X-Wings do. Uh, 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 and can't... Wait, and I'm pretty sure X-Wings can have a hyperdrive, right? Yeah, they can. Yeah, and I don't think TIE fighters do. No. So X-Wings could literally just bounce out of there whenever they need yeah they are literally like 20 million times better yeah another thing they shoot red lasers and the tie fighters shoot green lasers so 
red lasers good? Obviously, red lasers are way cooler than green lasers. Who wants green lasers? Like, you know, like Christmas tree? <laughs> <Yeah>, like, <laughs> the Grinch, question mark? Like, <laughs> the Hulk? What, what did you, why? Why do you want some green in here? But red? Red is cool. Like, that's, that's the laser like, color. I want, I want to see more of those red lightsabers, you know? Although, you kind of don't at the same time, because yeah. that means it's a Sith lightsaber. See, what I really want to see is white, because that means it was red, but then it's, like, changed. It, it's been healed. I want to see a beige lightsaber. There is an orangish, bronze-colored one. Lame, I want beige. Made by a Wookiee that made it with, like, technology in it, too, like electromagnets and stuff. I want but, beige, man. Okay, fine. I want maroon. <laughs> I want aqua. Turquoise. Yellow, orange, green, blue. There is yellow, there is orange, there is green, there is blue. All of them together. I want brown. <laughs> <laughs> Black? Dark saber? No, I want brown. <laughs> Picture getting cut up by a brown lightsaber. <laughs> a brown stick. <laughs> no. Behold the stick saber. What if it had like little like twigs coming out of Yo, it? Like, wait, like like Groot's lightsaber Yo. connected the MCU to Star Wars? No. No. Nope. Guys, this is a genius. Listen, idea. if any like Disney executives are listening, please don't st- Take this idea. <laughs> it would it would not be great. <laughs> Trust me. Anyways, I think it's amazing. <laughs> X wings are great. They're they amazing. don't have brown lasers, so they probably have Bluetooth for your phone or something. They probably have. They have CarPlay. Really nice subwoofers, bro. <laughs> Just blasting music in an X wing. <laughs> it's it's like Guardians of the Galaxy. I, again, back to the Guardians of the Galaxy mixed with Star Wars. They could technically connect in ways. Okay, this is a completely different movie, but I really want to know. So, turbines, they only work with air. You need air to actually have a turbine work. In Lilo and Stitch, they have turbines on all of the spaceships in that movie, but they're from space. It's just to look cool. (laughs) I know. And also, they probably weren't thinking about that. They probably weren't, but so like, what looks the best and what looks most like? I'm just an trying airship. to give contrast of like how amazing an X-wing is and the development. X-wing literally works in every it is, way. It is perfect. I want an X-wing. I need it. If, Plus, if someone can make an X-wing, then yes. I want you guys to think about this too. X-wings are fully submersible in water, and they can stay there for like a week, longer, like 50 years. Think of Luke. He literally just put his X-wing in the water for like. 30 or 40 years. Yeah. It was literally there for forever. And he pulls it out. (laughs) Forever. Pulls it out. Works fine. (laughs) Just just Ray just take it. I I, I didn't know that gas like could stay good that long. I don't think. What what does it use? What what does it use? Diesel. (laughs) (laughs) Is there a flux capacitor in there? Probably at this Actually, point. Fun fact: This is really stupid, but um, <laughs> yeah, if you where... look in the background of the Polar Express, when they're when they're trying to maneuver the train on the ice, on the ice, um, right in the background, when like you're in the engine, right, and you see the two engineers that are trying to like fix things in their own way, <laughs> we'll say, um, you can see the flux capacitor in the train. Time travel confirmed. It literally has been confirmed. Just search it up, and you will find it. It is the coolest Ye thing ever. Ye will find it. <laughs> Ye will find it. Yes. It is like one of the biggest theories, I swear. It's so cool. Like, I, I, I would bet it does have some sort of time travel. Yeah. And the reason is because he was – because all of the people supposedly when they got home were there at the exact same time they left. Uh, there has to be time travel involved. For- and you got to think about this. Five minutes to midnight. You said that five minutes ago. Remember, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. conductor's like, like, like it's really five minutes to midnight. Yeah, you said that five minutes ago. 
<laughs> you know, the, like the entire movie hints towards that. It doesn't just hint towards it. It full on just basically shows you it. Yeah. It shows you evidence that you are time traveling. Like, but it lets literally. you leave it leaves some room for imagination so that yeah. you can think about it, you know. Right. Everyone says that's like a flaw in the movie. I say it leaves room for imagination. And and I think that's also, you know, with movies that like they end but there's room for the characters to continue on and keep growing. The reason they do that is because then you can think about it. Then you think about their movie more and you even sometimes you may want to go watch it again. Yeah. I I don't care what people say. I think the Polar Express is an amazing movie, probably one of the best Christmas movies in my opinion. CGI is a little bit weird for 2004, it's, it's good. right? 2004, 2005. Yeah. That was amazing. It, it, it was well, yeah, it's, it's really good. It's just stuff. A little off-putting. It That's is a little the, off-putting. But it is still good. That's the thing. It's like no, no other movie. Yeah. Oh, there's like two others that were animated the same way. But mm-hmm. but that's beside the point. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> all right. I think, I think that's all I have for X-Wings. Yeah, that's that's about everything I have. Because TIE Fighters are just the worst. They're stupid. <laughs> Although they are pretty cool, you you'd have to admit they, they are they are decently. What cool. if they sounded like that? That just sounds like they're crashing. No, I am your father. I, I hope this sounds cool, because if it doesn't, then that'll be really sad. I'm sorry if it sounds sad. <laughs> <laughs> we got them, boys. Repeat, Squadron 2, go in. We got them. I'm still alive. <laughs> I know some stormtrooper in the background. Please, I surrender. I'll join the resistance. Rebellion. Comb the desert. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Please. I just joined for the cookies. Look, sir. Drawings. No, that's a stick. If you guys know that's from, I commend you. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'll have to figure that out later. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> w- would, would we like to do a random word? We can. I think it'd be fun. We can do a random word. What if we did it? What if we went back to the olden days where we did a random word in one minute? One minute. What if I what if I just flip to a random page? In this All right, dictionary? we've got un diccionario. Let's see. The letter S. Shell, shellac, shellfish, shelter, shepherd, sherbet, sheriff, shibboleth, shield, shift, shilling, shimmer, shin, shine, shingle, ship, shipment, shirt, shiver, shoal, shock, shoddy. <laughs> Shoddy. 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 Shoe. Shoot. Shop. Shore. Short. Shortage. Shorten. Shortening. Shorts. Shot. Should. Why don't we talk about shortening? Let's do that. Oh, I thought it said Shrek. (laughs) Shrek? We could. It's it's Shriek. We could talk about Shrek. Shrub. Either shortening or Shrek. I think we should talk about uh, shortening. All right. So I've got one minute to talk about shortening. You've also got one minute. I'm going to say what I got to say real quick. Okay. Starting three, two, one. Shortening can be good. Like vegetable shortening and stuff. It depends on what type. If you have like Crisco, that stuff is literally the worst thing you could eat or use. Because if you don't know, it has trans fat in it, which is really unhealthy for you. That's the type of fat that like really would make you gain weight, unhealthy, unhealthy weight. And it's really unhealthy for your cholesterol. And so you should not have it. You should probably find a new product. <laughs> I'm sorry, Crisco. I don't have it's just it's just what happens when you the luck of the draw. <laughs> um, it's basically the, I don't know what else to say. It just happens. <laughs> Oh, uh, Tracen. Uh, okay. One minute. Alrighty. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, Crisco is terrible for you. Do not ever have Crisco. Uh, what you want to have is probably all or 
maybe something organic, which is possible because you could get all vegetable shortening or something like that. So I highly recommend all vegetable shortening, which um, is a lot better for you. It still has fat in it, right? But it's not it's not trans fat. It's more of a saturated fat, which is a lot better for you, and it helps you to, uh, I guess, gain less weight, right? Um, it's still not the greatest thing, mind you, but it's it's better. So a uh, little, little tangent right here that I'm going to go on for like 15 seconds. Uh, spam. Everyone says is like the worst thing for you. So good. Honestly, there's only one little tiny preservative that keeps it the way it is inside the can. Basically, it's literally just hot dog stuff in in a thing, but healthier than a hot dog. So there you go. I know I have my minute, but spam is good, and that's the last thing I'll say. So, <laughs> uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you were able to. Imagine with us as we went along these topics today, and as always, we hope you enjoy and stay random. Stay random, odometer.